In the quaint town of Eldridge, April Fool's Day was taken seriously, with pranks ranging from harmless jokes to elaborate schemes. But the events of 2024 would leave the town in a state of fear, forever changing the nature of this day. The first incident occurred at the local high school, where a group of students planned a prank on their stern biology teacher, Mr. Hensley. They concocted a scheme to release three harmless snakes into the classroom, knowing Mr. Hensley's notorious fear of reptiles. However, when the day arrived, the snakes turned out to be venomous vipers, mysteriously swapped by an unknown person. Chaos ensued as the snakes slithered out during class causing panic and fear. Mr. Hensley was bitten, and the school was evacuated. With the authorities baffled by how the harmless prank escalated into a life-threatening situation. Meanwhile, across town in the local museum, a prank was set by a few employees to scare the night guard, Thomas, known for his love of ghost stories. They arranged dummies and props from a historical exhibit to create a haunted scene. That night, Thomas encountered more than just the staged frights. Real spectral figures roamed the halls, whispering ancient secrets and vanishing when approached. His terror was dismissed as an overactive imagination until the surveillance footage revealed glimpses of the inexplicable apparitions, turning his prank into a haunting mystery. The third incident involved the town's notorious prankster, Old Man Jenkins, who lived at the edge of Eldridge. Each year, Jenkins outdid himself with pranks that left the town both annoyed and amused. This year, he promised a spectacle never to be forgotten. Late at night, eerie lights and strange sounds emanated from his property, leading curious townsfolk to investigate. They found Jenkins' house abandoned, with a bizarre setup of mirrors and machines, creating a labyrinth of illusions. As they navigated the maze, the reflections began to distort showing not their images, but ghastly figures, leading them deeper into a twisted version of Jenkins's house. As the townsfolk stumbled through the maze, the boundary between prank and reality blurred. Each turn revealed more about Jenkins's obsession with the supernatural, his desire to touch the world beyond. The journey through the mirror maze ended in a room filled with ancient artifacts and a book open to a page titled Summoning the Veil. In the dimly lit room, the air thick with dust and the scent of old parchment, the townsfolk stood frozen, staring at the open tome. The book, bound in tattered leather, contained writings in a language none recognized alongside intricate diagrams and symbols that seemed to pulsate with an eerie energy. As they pondered their next move, the mirrors surrounding the room shimmered, their surfaces no longer reflecting the present, but rather displaying shifting scenes of past April Fool's days, each more sinister than the last. It became clear Jenkins' pranks were a facade for a deeper, darker obsession with the occult, each year's prank building upon the last, culminating in this final act. Outside, the rest of Eldridge remained unaware of the nightmare unfolding at Jenkins' property. The town's April Fool's Day festivities continued, with laughter and screams of mock terror filling the air, a stark contrast to the real horror trapped within the mirror maze. Back at the high school, the chaos had settled, but the fear lingered. The 
venomous snakes were captured, and Mr. Hensley was recovering. But questions remained. How did the snakes get switched? And why? The investigation led to a dead end, with no fingerprints or evidence to point to the perpetrator. The town began to buzz with theories of a curse, an unseen force that took delight in transforming harmless pranks into dangerous threats. Meanwhile, at the museum, Thomas the night guard was undergoing questioning. His claims of ghostly figures were met with skepticism until the security footage was reviewed, showing fleeting images of figures draped in historical garb their faces obscured, and movements eerily fluid. The museum staff could not explain how the exhibits seemed to come to life, nor could they identify the figures in the footage, leading to rumors of haunted artifacts and restless spirits. In Jenkins' house, the group of townsfolk, now captives of the maze, felt the walls closing in. The room with the ancient book became the center of a growing storm of supernatural energy. The artifacts around them, collected from corners of the world, resonated with the book's presence, glowing with an otherworldly light. The leader of the group, a local historian named Clara, tentatively reached out to touch the book's pages. As she made contact, the language twisted morphing into readable English, revealing the true purpose of the artifacts. They were tools for breaching the veil between the living and the dead, designed to merge realities on the night of April Fools, blurring the line between prank and peril. As Clara read aloud, the air grew colder, and the shimmering mirrors began to crack the barriers between worlds weakening. Shadows danced at the edges of the room, growing bolder, taking form as the spectral figures from the museum footage, their whispers growing into coherent voices, recounting tales of Eldridge's forgotten past, of rituals and sacrifices made in the name of power and knowledge. The group realized with horror that Jenkins had planned to use this night. When the town was distracted by harmless pranks and laughter, to enact a ritual that would tear down the walls between the living and the dead. Hoping to harness the chaos for unknown purposes, as the spectral figures grew more tangible, their features became clear they were the lost souls of Eldridge, those who had vanished or met mysterious ends over the centuries, each a pawn in Jenkins's long game of dark ambition. The room pulsed with their anger and sorrow, the air thick with the power of their unfulfilled lives. Clara, holding the book, realized that it acted as a conduit its pages a map of spells and incantations that Jenkins had used to bind these spirits to his will. The artifacts in the room, collected from dark corners of the world, were not mere collectibles, but instruments of a grand, sinister orchestra, each playing a note in the symphony of the veil's tearing. The townsfolk, united in their fear and resolve, decided to reverse the ritual, to close the breach before the veil was torn completely. The book contained the reversal spell, but it required a sacrifice of pure intent, someone who would willingly give themselves to the veil to restore balance. Outside, the town's festivities reached a fever pitch, the laughter joy, a stark contrast to the desperation within the mansion. Unbeknownst to the revelers, their very reality was fraying at the edges, the spirits of the past bleeding into the present, 
their forms glimpsed in the corner of one's eye, their whispers heard in the wind. Back at the high school, the biology class, now a crime scene, held a clue unnoticed in the chaos. A symbol, matching one in Jenkins's book, hidden under a desk. It hinted at the true scale of the prankster's plans. Each location in town, part of a larger pattern. A ritual circle that, if completed, would anchor the spirit world to the physical, making the veil's tear permanent. In Jenkins's house, the group prepared to enact the reversal spell, each member taking a role in the intricate dance of ancient words and gestures. The spectral figures watched, their expressions a mix of hope and despair, their fates tied to the ritual's outcome. Clara, stepping forward as the sacrificial offering, approached the altar where the book lay. Her colleagues, bound by a newfound camaraderie, and driven by the urgency of their plight, began the chant. Their voices, a harmonious plea to the forces they sought to appease. The artifacts around them hummed with energy, vibrating with the intensity of the chant. The mirrors cracked further, the scenes within them flashing between past and present, revealing the intertwining fates of the town and its ghostly inhabitants. As the ritual neared its climax, the boundary between the two worlds shimmered. The room filled with a blinding light, the spirits converging on Clara, their essences swirling around her in a vortex of light and shadow. Outside, the town celebration came to a sudden, inexplicable halt. The air charged with a palpable tension revelers feeling an unspoken fear, a collective shiver down the spine of Eldridge. Within the heart of Jenkins's mansion, the ritual reached its zenith, the air vibrating with the power of unbound spirits and ancient magic. Clara, surrounded by the vortex of spectral energy, recited the final words of the spell, her voice strong and clear resonating with the authority of one who understands the gravity of her sacrifice. The mirrors shattered in unison, the fragments suspended in the air, reflecting not the room, but glimpses of other times and places, each shard a window to a moment of Eldridge's haunted past. The spectral figures, now clear and distinct, hovered around Clara, their faces etched with expressions of gratitude and sorrow, their eyes reflecting the centuries of trapped existence. As the last word of the spell echoed through the chamber, a profound silence enveloped the room, the kind of silence that follows the cessation of a mighty storm, the light intensified consuming Clara and the swirling spirits, drawing them into the book, which pulsed like a beating heart, its pages flipping wildly as if caught in a tempest. Outside, the town of Eldridge, suspended in a moment of collective anticipation, felt a sudden release, as if waking from a shared nightmare. The eerie calm that followed was palpable, the night sky clearing to reveal stars unseen for generations, their light untainted by the spectral gloom that had lingered over the town. In the mansion, the remaining townsfolk watched in awe as the last of the light receded into the book, which now lay silent and still on the altar. The artifacts, their glow diminished appeared mundane, stripped of the dark power that had infused them. The room, once a nexus of otherworldly energy, was now just an old, 
dusty chamber in a crumbling mansion. The spirits, along with Clara, were gone, their departure marked by a peace that filled the space, a tranquil end to centuries of unrest and manipulation. But the story of Eldridge was far from over. The shattered mirrors, now mere glass, began to tremble. A soft vibration that grew steadily in intensity. The townsfolk, their relief short-lived, turned their attention to the fragments, which started to levitate, forming a new, unbroken mirror surface in the air. The new mirror, a portal of shimmering liquid glass, reflected a landscape not of this world, but of the one just beyond the veil. It was a world of twilight and shadows, where the spirits now resided, a place of peace and penance for Clara and the souls she led to salvation. As the townsfolk contemplated the mirror, a figure appeared in its surface, Clara, her expression serene yet tinged with sadness. She communicated without words, her message clear. The veil was restored, but the connection between the two worlds remained. A permanent bridge born from the night's events. The implications were profound. And as the townsfolk left the mansion, the reality of their new existence began to dawn on them. Eldridge was now a town touched by the otherworldly. Its fate intertwined with the spirits on the other side of the mirror. In the weeks that followed, the town slowly adapted to its new normal. The spectral appearances became less frequent, but were accepted as part of daily life. The mansion, once a place of fear, became a site of pilgrimage a place to communicate with the lost, and a reminder of the night when the veil was torn and mended. Yet, the tranquility was underpinned by a subtle unease, a collective memory of the mirror's power and the thin barrier that now separated the living from the dead. The events of April Fool's Day 2024 had irrevocably altered Eldridge, leaving its people in a world where the past was not just a memory, but a living, breathing part of the present. As the year progressed, the people of Eldridge found themselves caught between curiosity and fear, drawn to the mansion and its mirror portal, yet wary of its implications. The mirror, a silent sentinel, stood as a constant reminder of the thin line between their world and the spectral realm. Reports of strange occurrences began to surface, objects moving on their own, whispers in empty rooms, and fleeting shadows that roamed the streets at night. The town, once vibrant and bustling, took on a quieter, more contemplative demeanor its residents living in respectful coexistence with the unseen. The Eldridge Historical Society, seeing an opportunity to preserve and study the events, established a research center near the mansion. Scholars and paranormal experts from around the country descended on the town, eager to explore the phenomenon. Their investigations revealed fluctuations in the barrier between the worlds especially on anniversaries of significant historical events, suggesting that the veil was more malleable than previously thought. Meanwhile, a curious pattern emerged. Children in the town began to report dreams of the other side, vivid visions of the spectral world that were both enchanting and unsettling. They spoke of a great tree at the heart of the spirit realm, its branches stretching into the sky, and its roots deep in the earth, pulsating with the same energy as the mirror. These dreams led to a communal project 
to map the spirit world as described by the dreaming children. The project, a blend of art and oral history, took shape on a large canvas in the town hall, becoming a living document of the town's connection to the beyond. One night, during the anniversary of the ritual, the mirror's surface rippled intensely. And for the first time since the night of the ritual, a voice came through. It was Clara's, her tone urgent, warning of a new disturbance in the spirit realm, a darkness growing at the edges, threatening to breach the restored veil. The town council, heeding the warning, organized a vigil at the mansion where the townspeople gathered to support Clara and the spirits in their fight against this new threat. As they stood watch, the air around the mirror thickened and shadows writhed within its depths, hinting at a struggle within. This vigil became a ritual in itself, an annual event where the town united in solidarity the spirit realm, reinforcing the barrier with their collective will and belief. Each year, the darkness was kept at bay, but it grew stronger, more persistent, a reminder of the constant vigilance required to maintain the balance. The line between Eldridge and the spectral world blurred further, the town becoming a place of pilgrimage not only for scholars, and the curious, but for those seeking solace from the pain of lost loved ones, the mirror provided a place of communion, a bridge between the living and the dead, where messages were exchanged and closure sought. As the years passed, the town adapted to its new reality, its identity inextricably linked to the events of that fateful April Fool's Day, but beneath the surface, questions lingered. What was the source of the growing darkness in the spirit realm? How long could the balance be maintained? And what role would Eldridge play in the coming conflict between worlds? The answers to these questions remained shrouded in the mists of the unknown, the town standing as a beacon of light against the encroaching shadows, a sentinel at the crossroads of the living and the dead the past was not just remembered, but lived, and the future was a story yet to be told. In the shadowed corridors of Eldridge's history, whispers of the past mingled with the murmurs of the present, forging a tale that was continuously unfolding. The mirror, once a portal of curiosity and fear, had become a solemn icon of the town's guardianship over the fragile boundary that separated their world from the one beyond. As the darkness in the spirit realm grew, so did the town's commitment to understanding and protecting the veil. Eldridge's historical society, now a council of the veil, included members from both the living and the spectral. Communicating through the mirror to strategize and share knowledge. In one such meeting, a revelation emerged. The darkness was not merely a residual malice from Jenkins's rituals, but a sentient force, an entity banished long ago, seeking re-entry into the world. This entity, known in the ancient texts as the Shadowed One, had found a foothold in the spirit realm exploiting the weakened veil to gather strength. The town, united in purpose, launched a dual-fronted effort to combat this threat. On the physical side, the council fortified the mansion, turning it into both a research center and a sanctuary, where artifacts and knowledge were amassed to reinforce the veil. On the spectral side, Clara and the freed spirits worked to contain the entity's influence. Their efforts visible in the mirror 
as a luminous battle in the shadowed landscape of the other world. As the conflict escalated, the dreams of Eldridge's children became more intense. Their nocturnal journeys revealing not just the beauty of the spirit realm, but also the creeping taint of the shadowed one. They spoke of a great tree, the heart of the spirit world, now ensnared by dark vines, pulsing with the corruption of the entity. These dreams were not mere figments, but prophetic visions, guiding the town's efforts. Artisans and seers collaborated to craft talismans that mirrored the tree's form. Objects imbued with the collective will and protection of Eldritch, designed to strengthen the spirit's fight against the encroaching darkness. As the anniversary of the ritual approached, the boundary between the worlds thinned, the air around the mirror crackling with tension. The town gathered, not just in vigil, but in defiance. A community standing as one against the encroaching darkness. Their voices joined in a chant that resonated with the power of unity and resolve. In the spirit realm, illuminated by the light of the great tree, Clara led the spectral forces in a counter-assault against the shadowed one. The battle reflected in the mirror, was a spectacle of light and shadow. Each clash reverberating through the veil felt as tremors in the physical world. The children of Eldridge, sensitive to the fluctuations of the spirit world, experienced shared visions during this time. Their slumbering minds walking the paths of the spirit realm, witnessing the battle and bringing back crucial insights to aid the town's efforts. This annual confrontation became a tradition, a part of Eldridge's culture, its significance known to every inhabitant. Each year, the town fortified its defenses, the rituals and preparations more elaborate, guided by the wisdom of the past and the revelations of the present. As the struggle continued, the identity of Eldridge intertwined ever more deeply with the spirit realm, the town becoming a living symbol of the battle between light and darkness. The mirror, once a curiosity, now stood as a revered monument, a gateway to understanding, a bridge between worlds, and a battleground for the soul of both realms. The story of Eldridge, with its roots deep in the past and branches stretching into the unseen, was a living narrative of resilience and courage, a testament to the town's role as the keeper of the veil, where every April Fool's Day was not just a reminder of the thin line between jest and truth, but also a reaffirmation of their guardianship over the delicate boundary that separated their world from the shadows beyond. The town of Eldridge, now known as much for its guardianship of the Vale as for its quaint charm, faced an evolving challenge. Each April Fool's Day marked not only a historical moment of jest, but also a solemn reminder of the thin veil that separated them from the spectral realm and the ever-looming threat of the Shadowed One. The Council of the Veil, vale, with members from both the living and the spectral, worked tirelessly to strengthen the barrier. They delved into ancient texts and collaborated with experts in the supernatural, crafting a network of wards and sigils around the town each a bastion against the encroaching darkness. As the entity's attempts grew more desperate and cunning, the spectral battles witnessed in the mirror became more intense. The spirit realm 
alight with the clash of energies. Clara, now a revered figure in both worlds, led the spectral defense. Her strategy and insights crucial in countering the Shadowed One's advances. The children of Eldridge, their dreams more vivid and prophetic, played an unexpected role in the town's defense. Their innocent connection to the spirit realm provided untainted perspectives and solutions that eluded even the most experienced seers and historians. They spoke of hidden paths and forgotten allies within the spectral world, elements that Clara and her forces could use to their advantage. In one significant dream shared by several children, they discovered an ancient grove in the spirit realm where the roots of the great tree delved into a pool of pure light, the essence of the realm's life force. This grove, shielded from the Shadowed One's corruption, held the key to revitalizing the tree and, by extension, the strength of the veil. The town's strategy evolved from mere defense to active restoration focusing on healing the great tree at the heart of the spirit realm. Artisans in Eldridge, guided by the children's visions, created a series of intricate devices and charms designed to channel the town's collective energy and goodwill into the spectral realm, aiding Clara and her forces. As the next April Fool's Day approached, a palpable tension filled the air, the town bracing for what many believed would be a decisive confrontation. The preparations were more elaborate than ever. The entire town, involved in crafting a web of protection and empowerment that stretched from the physical to the spectral. The night of the vigil, the town gathered around the mansion, the air vibrating with chance and the energy of anticipation. In the spectral realm, a similar gathering took place. Spirits from all epochs of Eldridge's history converging to lend their strength to Clara and the Living Tree. The mirror, a silent witness to this unity, began to glow, its surface rippling like the surface of a disturbed pond. Within its depths, the battle unfolded, a mesmerizing dance of light and shadow. Clara, at the forefront, wielded the combined energies of both realms, her form radiant and powerful. The line between Eldridge and the spectral world blurred further, the town becoming a place of pilgrimage, not only for scholars, and the curious, but for those seeking solace from the pain of lost loved ones. The mirror provided a place of communion, a bridge between the living and the dead, where messages were exchanged and closure sought. As the years passed, the town adapted to its new reality, its identity inextricably linked to the events of that fateful April Fool's Day, but beneath the surface, questions lingered. What was the source of the growing darkness in the spirit realm? How long could the balance be maintained? And what role would Eldridge play in the coming conflict between worlds? The answers to these questions remained shrouded in the mists of the unknown, the town standing as a beacon of light against the encroaching shadows, a sentinel at the crossroads of the living and the dead where the past was not just remembered, but lived, and the future was a story yet to be told. In the shadowed corridors of Eldridge's history, whispers of the past mingled with the murmurs of the present, forging a tale that was continuously unfolding. The mirror, once a portal of curiosity and fear, had become a solemn icon of the town's guardianship over the fragile boundary that separated their world from the one beyond. 
as the darkness in the spirit realm grew, so did the town's commitment to understanding and protecting the veil. Eldridge's Historical Society, now a Council of the Veil, included members from both the living and the spectral, communicating through the mirror to strategize and share knowledge. In one such meeting, a revelation emerged. The darkness was not merely a residual malice from Jenkins's rituals, but a sentient force, an entity banished long ago, seeking re-entry into the world. This entity, known in the ancient texts as the Shadowed One, had found a foothold in the spirit realm, exploiting the weakened veil to gather strength. The town, united in purpose, launched a dual-fronted effort to combat this threat. On the physical side, the council fortified the mansion, turning it into both a research center and a sanctuary where artifacts and knowledge were amassed to reinforce the veil. On the spectral side, Clara and the freed spirits worked to contain the entity's influence. Their efforts visible in the mirror as a luminous battle in the shadowed landscape of the other world. As the conflict escalated, the dreams of Eldridge's children became more intense their nocturnal journeys, revealing not just the beauty of the spirit realm, but also the creeping taint of the shadowed one. They spoke of a great tree, the heart of the spirit world, now ensnared by dark vines, pulsing with the corruption of the entity. These dreams were not mere figments, but prophetic visions, guiding the town's efforts Artisans and seers collaborated to craft talismans that mirrored the tree's form. Objects imbued with the collective will and protection of Eldridge, designed to strengthen the spirit's fight against the encroaching darkness. As the anniversary of the ritual approached, the boundary between the worlds thinned the air around the mirror crackling with tension. The town gathered, not just in vigil, but in defiance. A community standing as one against the encroaching darkness. Their voices joined in a chant that resonated with the power of unity and resolve. In the spirit realm, illuminated by the light of the great tree, Clara led the spectral forces in a counter-assault against the Shadowed One. The battle, reflected in the mirror, was a spectacle of light and shadow. Each clash reverberating through the veil felt as tremors in the physical world. The children of Eldridge, sensitive to the fluctuations of the spirit world, experienced shared visions during this time. Their slumbering minds walking the paths of the spirit realm, witnessing the battle, and bringing back crucial insights to aid the town's efforts. This annual confrontation became a tradition, a part of Eldridge's culture, its significance known to every inhabitant. Each year, the town fortified its defenses rituals and preparations more elaborate, guided by the wisdom of the past and the revelations of the present. As the struggle continued, the identity of Eldridge intertwined ever more deeply with the spirit realm, the town becoming a living symbol of the battle between light and darkness. The mirror, once a curiosity, now stood as a revered monument, a gateway to understanding, a bridge between worlds, and a battleground for the soul of both realms. The story of Eldridge, with its roots deep in the past and branches stretching into the unseen, was a living narrative of resilience 
and courage, a testament to the town's role as the keeper of the Vale, where every April Fool's Day was not just a reminder of the thin line between jest and truth, but also a reaffirmation of their guardianship over the delicate boundary that separated their world from the shadows beyond. The town of Eldridge, now known as much for its guardianship of the Vale as for its quaint charm, faced an evolving challenge. Each April Fool's Day marked not only a historical moment of jest, but also a solemn reminder of the thin veil that separated them from the spectral realm and the ever-looming threat of the shadowed one. The Council of the Veil, vale, with members from both the living and the spectral, worked tirelessly to strengthen the barrier. They delved into ancient texts and collaborated with experts in the supernatural, crafting a network of wards and sigils around the town, each a bastion against the encroaching darkness. As the entity's attempts grew more desperate and cunning, the spectral battles witnessed in the mirror became more intense. The spirit realm, a light with the clash of energies. Clara, now a revered figure in both worlds, led the spectral defense. Her strategy and insights crucial in countering the Shadowed One's advances. The children of Eldridge, their dreams more vivid and prophetic, played an unexpected role in the town's defense. Their innocent connection to the spirit realm provided untainted perspectives and solutions that eluded even the most experienced seers and historians. They spoke of hidden paths and forgotten allies within the spectral world, elements that Clara and her forces could use to their advantage. In one significant dream shared by several children, they discovered an ancient grove in the spirit realm, where the roots of the great tree delved into a pool of pure light, the essence of the realm's life force. This grove, shielded from the shadowed one's corruption, held the key to revitalizing the tree and, by extension, the strength of the veil. The town's strategy evolved from mere defense to active restoration, focusing on healing the great tree at the heart of the spirit realm. Artisans in Eldridge, guided by the children's visions, created a series of intricate devices and charms designed to channel the town's collective energy and goodwill into the spectral realm, aiding Clara and her forces. As the next April Fool's Day approached, a palpable tension filled the air, the town bracing for what many believed would be a decisive confrontation. The preparations were more elaborate than ever. The entire town, involved in crafting a web of protection and empowerment that stretched from the physical to the spectral. The night of the vigil, the town gathered around the mansion, the air vibrating with chance and the energy of anticipation. In the spectral realm, a similar gathering took place. Spirits from all epochs of Eldridge's history converging to lend their strength to Clara and the living tree. The mirror, a silent witness to this unity, began to glow, its surface rippling like the surface of a disturbed pond. Within its depths, the battle unfolded, a mesmerizing dance of light and shadow. Clara, at the forefront, wielded the combined energies of both realms her form radiant and powerful, 